Hello ladies and gentlemen and video game lovers of all kind and welcome back to the channel. As always, I am your host Brett Murphy and for today's video it is going to be another godlike to not quite, which is essentially just my version of a tier video. And I am going to be tearing up the Call of Duty franchise. And there will be two things I want to touch on very quickly before actually getting into the tier video itself. The first one is that when we jump into the tiering part of the video, you will notice that Call of Duty 1, 2, and 3 and the other spin-offs like Call of Duty, what was it, Final Fronts or something on the PS2 for World at War, they will not be included for two reasons. One, I don't really have an opinion on them. Call of Duty World at War was my first Call of Duty and I got COD 4 Modern Warfare around the same time. I don't really have an opinion on all of those other games. Also, the fact that they are completely different in basically every single way aside from being a first person shooter because COD 4 Modern Warfare did basically a complete reset on the franchise, set a brand new foundation and every single Call of Duty since then has been building on the foundation that was set in COD 4 Modern Warfare, so I see no reason whatsoever to include Call of Duty 1, 2, 3 or the various spin-offs. The other part that I wanted to address is that you might be wondering why why am I covering this now? Because Vanguard is already a month old. Essentially, the reason I am covering this now is because Black Ops Cold War's life cycle is officially done for as of December 8th of 2021. Now, most people consider the old Call of Duty dead when the new Call of Duty releases, and that may be the case for a lot of people. It was for me. As soon as Vanguard came out, I installed that, and then I uninstalled Black Ops Cold War. With that being said, though, Black Ops Cold War was in its sixth and final season. It was only about halfway through when Vanguard dropped, so the entire last month that you've been playing Vanguard, you've still been progressing through that Black Ops Cold War battle pass. Black Ops Cold War was still getting weekly playlist updates, it was still getting new content like new maps and guns and things like that. It was very much so still alive. If you were playing Warzone or Modern Warfare 2019, you were still progressing through your Black Ops Cold War levels. However, as of December 8th of 2021, there was the Vanguard integration, which means that we are now in the year of Vanguard. If you play Vanguard, Black Ops Cold War, Warzone, or Modern Warfare, you are progressing through the Vanguard Battle Pass. If you play any of those games I just mentioned, you are leveling up your Vanguard levels and going through the Vanguard Prestiges, with your Black Ops Cold War Prestiges being memorialized in the Barracks menu or something like that. So I'm doing this video now so I can form a full opinion on Black Ops Cold War at the end of its life cycle. There is no more content coming for this game. I know a lot of people are holding out hope for a Zombies Chronicle. 2. I don't think that's gonna happen. And so with all that being said, let's hop right into things. Okay, so just like last time, folks, these are my own personal tiers, but they run just like any other sort of standard tier list. So of course, that what most people would have as S or the God tier for me is Godlike, appropriately so. A for Awesome Sauce, B for Good as Gold, C for Quite Alright, D for Super Meh, and of course, F is Rock Bottom. So essentially, you're just going to be getting my footnotes on each of these Call of Duties, my quick little positives and negatives and why I put them in the spot that I put them, essentially. And with that being said, it starts off with Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. This one, to me, it's, uh, it's an interesting one, and I feel like a lot of people are gonna disagree, maybe agree. I think I will... I'm stuck between these two. Good as gold and quite all right, right? Because it's either it's like it's on... If it's good as gold, I'm saying it's on like the better half of Call of Duty history. But if I put it on quite all right, I'm saying it's on the lower half. Mm... I'm gonna go good as gold. Okay, and hear me out. Here's why. Okay, the campaign... Even though it has a real-life villain as the main villain with Kevin Spacey, I thought it was a great campaign. It's a ton of fun, and it might honestly have the best cutscenes of any Call of Duty, even including the new Call of Duty. Uh, the multiplayer is 50-50 because it is the first Jetpack Call of Duty. It's the one that started off the Jetpack Call of Duty era. However, it is the only one of its kind, and at the time, it was actually kind of fresh, new, and exciting, and I had a lot of fun. Like... This is the Call of Duty I played the most up until, like, the recent Call of Duties, like Warzone and Black Ops Cold War. I played these new ones a lot, but for years and years, this was, like, the cutoff for me. Like, I had probably, like, eight days or something like that put into Advanced Warfare. 
I had a lot of fun with this multiplayer. I know a lot of people are likely going to disagree. This Call of Duty turned off a ton of fans. Despite the movement system though, I enjoyed it because the movement, the ground movement, it still felt fast and fluid. The gunplay felt quick and snappy and responsive. There was a lot of variety in the gameplay. Yes, I do not like in hindsight the giant like boosting. Like, this was you double tapped A and you just skyrocketed and you could dash around and stuff. I get why people didn't like it. I didn't like it either, but at its core, it was a good Call of Duty multiplayer experience. However, this was the introduction to supply drops and supply drops completely ruined the game because this one in particular, maybe Black Ops 3, but we'll get in that later, was probably the one that was the most pay to win because there was variants of weapons and they weren't just cosmetic variants, they actually changed the stats. Basically, if you were lucky enough to roll and get a Bow Obsidian Steed or an ASM-1 Speakeasy, I believe they were called, you essentially ran the game and no one could really do anything about it. So stuff like that really brought down the multiplayer, but I think the core multiplayer, sorry, was really solid, actually, for Sledgehammer's first, like, solo attempt. When the game launched, we had a kind of watered-down version of Modern Warfare 3 survival mode, but if you beat, I think, all of the maps, you did an Easter egg on the last map or something when you unlocked it, it kind of gave, like, a brief glimpse at a zombies mode. So, I agree and disagree with the eventually introduced zombies mode, because on the one hand, to put it behind a paid DLC while you either had to buy the season pass or the map pack one to get the zombies mode, I find that is super, super cheeky and I really disagree with it. However, the first zombies map that they released, I played non-stop. Me and my friends absolutely grinded out that zombies map. I have such good memories playing that. So as a whole, the zombies, even though you had to pay for it, a ton of fun. The multiplayer, aside from the pay to win mechanics with the supply drops, was a fun multiplayer and I applaud them for doing something different and it's the only Call of Duty of its kind still because they never reverted back to the jetpack style like this and the campaign was super solid. So Advanced Warfare I do think is on the better half of Call of Duty's history in hindsight. Call of Duty Black Ops it's yeah it's got to go in godlike. Even though it isn't my favorite Call of Duty, because I know a lot of people, especially I noticed a lot of content creators recently, say that the original Black Ops is their favorite Call of Duty. It isn't my own personal favorite, favorite Call of Duty, but again, so many good memories. Arguably the best campaign, because it's not just generic, okay, well it is kind of just generic Michael Bay explosions and gunfights and stuff like that, but it actually tried to dig deeper and give us a campaign that we actually had to think a little bit about, and it had some trippy moments, and overall, it was great. They actually hired a lot of, like, A-list actors for it. I had Sam Worthington in the lead role. So, they did a lot of good with this campaign in terms of, you know, standard Call of Duty campaigns. The multiplayer, iconic. One of the best multiplayer experiences in Call of Duty's history. You had the COD points back then that you didn't have to pay for. You just earned. You could use that to buy attachments and perks and things like that. And, of course, that led to wager matches, which have yet to return in any sort of capacity for Call of Duty. Obviously, you can't introduce them with Call of Duty points now because you have to buy the Call of Duty points, and that would be actual gambling, so you can't have that. But, I, you know, they still have party modes. It is old school Call of Duty when you go back to it now. It is going to feel a little bit weird. It doesn't have, like, the unlimited sprint and as much customization as we're used to. But overall, the multiplayer experience was one of my favorites. And then the zombies was phenomenal. On top of Kino Der Toten, right at launch, we also had five, the map set in the Pentagon, if you were able to beat the campaign, and you could also do a secret little cheat thing and unlock Dead Ops Arcade as well. So Black Ops, the original, through and through, still to date, one of the best Call of Duties that we ever got. Black Ops 2, yeah, you already know it. What else can I say about this game that hasn't already been said? This is likely my favorite Call of Duty. It's close between this one and another one that I'll mention down the line, but this is likely my favorite Call of Duty. It is the one that I put the most time into. It is the only one that I have ever hit Master Prestige in. You know, it's just, there's so much here, right? It was the introduction, if you go to rate the multiplayer, it was the introduction of the pick 10 system. Um, the campaign, it actually had different paths you could go down. It had like four different endings. There was different choices you could make throughout the campaign. The zombies mode, a lot of people didn't love transit. I absolutely adore transit. And the DLC maps were phenomenal for it. Again, I know it was back then when it was paid DLC, but like Origins, for instance, possibly the best zombies map out there. Through and through, Black Ops 2 
has stood the test of time and in my eyes it will forever stand the test of time then we hop into black ops 3 and a lot of people are likely going to disagree with me on this one I'm probably going to put it in quite all right. Yes, below Advanced Warfare. A lot of people think this is like an A-tier Call of Duty, possibly even like a God-tier Call of Duty. I started out enjoying it. I liked the change at the time from like the straight-up skyrocketing jetpacking from Advanced Warfare to the more gradual incline of Black Ops 3. I like the change that they made to the movement system, adding wall running. It made everything just feel more fast and responsive, and you had like the unlimited sprint and things like that. But... It added in a few things into Call of Duty, which I think further hindered the overall experience. It added in, well, it had supply drops like Advanced Warfare. I think they had them right for la from launch with Black Ops 3. And it arguably had a worse supply drop system than Advanced Warfare because it had countless guns in it too. And I know Advanced Warfare had a few, but this one had like, at the end of the game's life cycle, like half, if not more of its guns were completely locked behind a paywall and that makes it like automatically uh, paid away it is disgusting the microtransaction system in this game and it was the first game to introduce specialists which in my mind never should have been in call of duty again i had fun with them during the game's life cycle don't get me wrong the fact that they can just go and get a free kill streak essentially and completely ruin the flow of the game something that they absolutely did not earn completely like i said ruined the flow of the game so the core multiplayer experience i thought was really solid but the microtransaction system was arguably the worst we've ever had and the introduction to specialists kind of ruined the game for a lot of people especially when there were some really really cheeky specialist abilities that could completely mess up the flow of everything in terms of zombies it's 50 50 because the core zombies experience i really didn't care for what well, this was the one that started off with like shadows of evil or shadow of evil or whatever didn't care for it didn't care for any of the dlc maps but at the end of the game's life cycle they did release the zombies chronicles pack which had what like eight zombies maps remastered in it played the hell out of those but that was also because it was the classic zombies experiences and not really black ops 3's zombie experiences and the campaign was horrendous probably the worst campaign in call of duty's history with all that, the only thing it has going for it is Zombies Chronicles, which isn't actually Black Ops 3's content, and then a core solid multiplayer experience. Everything else is bad, so quite alright. Black Ops 4, I don't think it's quite rock bottom, but I, I do think it was a step down from Black Ops 3. Certain things were a step in the right direction. I like how they got rid of supply drops and they added in the Battle Pass system. But there still was a season pass, even though they said there wasn't. They promised there wasn't a season pass. Instead, they just renamed it to the Black Ops Pass. The core multiplayer experience was basically a complete carbon copy of Black Ops 3, minus the jetpacks, which, yes, means the specialists were still included. They did try to address some of the issues with the specialists in Black Ops 3, but I think they failed miserably at that. Specialists, the issue I had with them in Black Ops 3, carried over to Black Ops 4. There was no campaign. However... There was Blackout, which was Call of Duty's first attempt at a battle royale. It wasn't free to play like Warzone, but Blackout did walk so that Warzone could run. It was the stepping stones that were set from Blackout that led to Warzone being such a success. So I commend them for Blackout because that was great. I had a lot of fun with that mode. The core multiplayer, though, I didn't really love. The playlist I probably played the most was the Bare Bones one when that released way after launch where the specialist abilities were out. Because, like I said, the core multiplayer in Black Ops 3 was good. It's the exact same in Black Ops 4 except no jetpacks, which means it's even better. And then it comes to the zombies mode. There were fun zombies maps in this. Right at launch, they gave us the most zombies maps ever. There was the one set in the Gladiator Arena. There was the one set on the Titanic, which was a ton of fun. And then there was also the one that was, um, it was a remake of Mob of the Dead, and they called it Blood of the Dead or something. And I love Mob of the Dead. That's one of my favorite Call of Duty maps ever. That's like probably top five or six for me. Loved Mob of the Dead. So the remake was nice. Um, and then the DLC maps, I didn't buy the season pass because I refused to. They told us there wasn't a season pass and there was a Black Ops pass. So I was like, no, I'm not buying it. So again, it got some things right, like getting rid of supply drops. I liked having more zombies experience and I liked Blackout. But overall, the game just kind of felt like a complete carbon copy of Black Ops 3, just minus the supply drops and minus the jetpacks. I don't know. There was a lot of things it did wrong and it, it really did feel like it wasn't its own game. It Felt like it was just sort of Black Ops 3.5. And overall, I thought that there was a lot of things that this game did wrong. And it did not have the legs. I played this game for a couple of months. Maybe not even that. I think it was a couple of weeks. 
came back when they added the bare bones mode and then it just completely lost me by the end of it one of my least played CODs, and that's why it ends up down there. I know it sounded like I gave it more positives than Black Ops 3, but when you go back as a whole, I just did not vibe with this game during its life cycle at all. Black Ops Cold War. A lot of people are not going to agree with me on this one, and that is perfectly okay. This is where the dislike button is going to get hit the most, especially after I put Black Ops 3 in quite all right. Black Ops Cold War is straight up going into the awesome sauce category. It has its issues. I understand that. It had a very rocky launch. There was not a ton of content there at launch. I get that. There was a lot wrong with this game. There still is a lot wrong with this game. But that being said, in terms of time played, this is my most played Call of Duty since Black Ops 2, which was, again, Black Ops 2, my favorite Call of Duty of all time. I loved Black Ops Cold War. I had so much fun playing this game. I just enjoyed it. I, I just genuinely enjoyed it. I can't even really describe why. I liked, you know, the campaign did similar things to Black Ops 2. There was varying paths and there were side missions and things like that. And I think there was multiple endings and stuff. Great. They brought the campaign back. People enjoyed it. Good stuff. The core multiplayer experience, a lot of people have things to say about it and to bitch about it and stuff like that. I had a ton of fun, especially League Play. That was my most played playlist. Me and my buddies would get together and play League Play almost every single night was it broken yes absolutely were there a ton of broken things in this game especially when they kept adding dlc weapons like the marshall double barrel shotguns and the em2 and things like that and pretty much every dlc weapon they added was either completely overpowered or completely underpowered the game had its issues but i had so much fun playing this game and also speaking on the zombies too, I thought the zombies was great. I know a lot of hardcore zombies fans did not vibe with the zombies mode. They thought that it was just too dumbed down. It was too simple. It was like a step back to cater to noob-ish players. But I am like, I am a traditional zombies Call of Duty player. When I hit Black Ops 3, I pretty much wrote it off. I didn't like the gobble gum systems and having all this other little extra stuff like leveling up separately and all these other things. I didn't like that. I like just hop in with a group of friends, survive as long as you can, hit up the pack a punch, grab your perks, get out. This gave that back to me. I thought this was a nice balance because there were still things in here like the armor system and the weapon upgrading system and stuff like that that made it a bit more advanced than like straight up noob level, but it wasn't super extreme that it just sort of anyone that wasn't on the zombie stream completely, they couldn't play it and enjoy it. It was that nice middle ground, and then of course we had Outbreak added, which was huge. I thought the zombies DLC maps were great. I thought D-Machine was a great starting point. I really did love the zombies, and I vibed with it super hard. But again, the core multiplayer experience, I had a ton of fun. And to me, this was Treyarch's love letter to classic Call of Duty fans and to the Black Ops franchise as a whole. There was a nice variety of new maps that were really good, and a nice variety of maps that were added for free down the line that were classics and it wasn't just like black ops 2 or just the same maps that we got over and over again like summit and stuff like that there were some new maps in there some maps from black ops 2 some maps from black ops 1 there was a nice variety and some maps you wouldn't even really think to add back into the game the throwback to classic call of duty fans i am w almost guaranteeing this i'm willing to say that this is likely the last call of duty that we'll get in this style like this more arcade styled shooter it definitely is an arcadey shooter but the IW engine or the IW8 engine, whatever it's called, the one that's in Modern Warfare 2019, Warzone, and Vanguard is likely going to be the engine going forward. I feel like this is the last Call of Duty on this sort of old school, much more arcadey and cartoonist feeling engine. So I'm guessing that the IW engine is going to be the engine going forward. So this is the last one that we'll get in this style. And for that, I loved it because I'm an old school Call of Duty fan. Then we get to Call of Duty Ghosts. Again, another one that, depending on what point in time you asked me, I would have had very different opinions on this game. A lot of people love to hate it, but for me, I have great fond memories with Call of Duty Ghosts. At launch, I was disappointed. It felt like a massive, massive step back from Black Ops 2, and in a lot of ways, it still is. But at the same time, I look back on that game and I had so much fun playing with my friends. Playing in online Twitter tournaments, just running around pub stomping, just playing it by myself and trying to level up in prestige and things like that. I had a ton of fun with this game. I really did. When I look back at it, I have a lot of good, fond, nostalgic memories for Call of Duty Ghosts. 
The campaign, I thought, was actually solid, and it ended on a cliffhanger that just never got resolved. The multiplayer had its issues. A lot of people didn't like the prestige system because you leveled up in prestige soldiers, each soldier once, and there was like 10 soldiers or something like that. A lot of people didn't like the perk system because you had like a certain amount of points, and there were like 30 perks to pick from, and a lot of them were super useless. There wasn't a lot of iconic weapons. There wasn't a lot of iconic maps. Uh, the UAV was like a ground streak now. There were a lot of issues, and... But I just can't help it. I had fun. I look back on that game and I have a lot of fond memories of times with friends. And that really is what can make or break a Call of Duty is how much you played it with friends and how much you guys enjoyed it. And I look back on it. I have a lot of fond memories of Call of Duty Ghosts. Its third mode was Extinction. It never really stuck. It was trying to be their version of Zombies. I get that. I respect it. It was fun for what it was. I would have loved if they would have continued creating Extinction and just kept on going with that and that was like zombies every time you had Treyarch or sledgehammer and then extinction every time you had infinity ward the game mode was a ton of fun what can i say but that's what it comes down to is how i feel about it now and how i feel about it now is that i had a blast playing ghosts infinite warfare yeah rock bottom i know it's easy to shit on this game and i'm gonna do it uh the campaign i heard it was really good i never really bothered to play it because i barely played this game at all i don't even think i have a full day played in it um, it launched with Call of Duty 4 Remastered, that's what I played that year, um, but the game itself, it just took it a step too far, like, the jetpacks was one thing, but then you had the jetpacks, and then you set it in space, and have, like, robots, and laser guns, and things like that, it, it, you know, I think it's, like, the second most disliked video in YouTube history, that's all you really have to say about it, I did, however, enjoy the zombies mode, I can say that, the zombies, was it, zombies in space land, that was just fun and campy. They knew what they wanted to do with it. They knew that the game was pretty much a joke uh, right from the hop. So they made the zombies a joke. Yeah, zombies. It was just like 80s retro style zombies map set in like an amusement park and stuff. And I had a blast with that. Everything else with the game though, I couldn't care less for. I don't have any fond memories with it. I don't think I ever even played it with my friends because none of us liked it. I think half of us didn't even buy it. Um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019. This one. Yeah good as gold i like cold war more than i like modern warfare again i know the dislike button's gonna get smashed but you can't see how many there are anymore anyway so i don't really care moral of the story is modern warfare did a lot of good for call of duty also did a lot of bad for call of duty it was the first call of duty to go completely no season pass no supply drops it was the battle pass system uh post-launch content was all completely free and i commend them for that it was the first big shakeup in the franchise since call of duty 4 modern warfare because it basically completely changed the engine it changed the look and the feel of the game entirely the campaign was fantastic it looked great it had a good solid and like borderline believable story the multiplayer it's 50 50 a lot of people hated this new system and the new look I was a mixed on it. I started off not loving it, but then, of course, into 2020, we got into the pandemic, so I was kind of just forced to do it because it was the only way I could interact with friends, and I ended up really enjoying it and having a lot of fun playing the game. However, the core multiplayer mechanics are not great. The footsteps are far too loud, uh, not having dead silence as a perk. The maps were horrendously laid out. The only good maps in the entire game are the Shipment Remake and Shoot House. Everything else was god awful. It was super camp heavy. Uh, they went back to kill streaks instead of score streaks, so it made it even more camp heavy. A lot of stuff I just didn't like about it. And then the Spec Ops mode was completely unplayable. Like, literally broken, unplayable, awful garbage. So, there are some really good high points with this game, but there are some really low negative points, which makes me put it in the good as gold territory, which is like the B level territory. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. I'm not giving this game god tier and here is or will i hmm i think i think i have to actually you know what i think i'll bump that up to godlike because this is the call of duty game that changed it all it changed everything about call of duty and still to this very day with each and every new call we get it's just further building on the formula and the foundation that this original modern warfare laid out this is where we got the create a class system this is where we got our three kill streaks this is where we got everything that we know in call of duty today essentially it started here is it super bare bones now when you go back absolutely it is extremely extremely bare bones there's barely any customization options at all aside from picking like an attachment 
there it's you know and it's boots on the ground and there's like no unlimited sprints so the flow of the game is super slow some of the maps are a bit too big and all this other stuff and the weapons feel weird and everything it's a game from 2007 and it feels like a game from 2007 however what cannot be ignored is what this game did for first person shooters the genre as a whole in the gaming industry and what it did for call of duty so for that alone it ends up in the godlike tier modern warfare 2 right up there with it Modern Warfare 2, this was the one I was talking about, of course, earlier, that is in contention for that first place spot with Black Ops 2. It was my favorite until Black Ops 2 came out, and then I flipped back and forth every single time someone asks me. Even now, I don't know if I could give a definitive answer, because I feel guilty saying one or the other. The game took everything that Modern Warfare did and just did it better. It gave us more kill streaks and let us choose. It gave us more customization, more camos, more attachments, more perks with pro perks being added, just more customization, a bigger and more better laid out maps. The game just felt and it looked better. It sounded better. It felt better to play. There is so much in this game that is just unbelievably iconic. I can't even begin to describe. Even if you're not a Call of Duty fan, you've played Modern Warfare 2. You know what it's all about. You can name the best weapons. You can name the best maps. On top of that, though, you can also name all of the broken shit because there is a lot of broken shit that is still broken to this day, like the Commando Pro uh, knifing lunge, the one-man army noob tube class setup, but that's all part of the game's charm and fun and why people look back on it with such fond memories. Yeah, a lot of it, a lot of it was unbelievably rage-inducing, but a lot of it was so fun that you couldn't help just be unbelievably addicted to the game. And I look back on this game now with some of the fondest memories in this franchise. This is the first new Call of Duty that I got. I started Call of Duty with World at War, but it was in like March or April of 2009. So it was already like six, seven months deep into its life cycle. Modern Warfare 2 was my first new Call of Duty and I just unapologetically love everything about that game the good the bad the ugly the broken i love all of it now we get to modern warfare 3 which is another one that might be a little bit controversial um i'm putting this in the awesome sauce category this was i think i did a video on it a little while back i think this was the most content we've ever had from a call of duty at launch i think it had the most weapons i think it had the most maps maybe not the most modes and things like that but it had the most streaks this game did so much right it brought back a lot of fan favorite maps it brought back in a ton of new maps that are now iconic i think it had possibly the most weapons at launch i know it had the most streaks was the first time introducing us to the uh strike package system where you had the assault support and then the specialist bonus and I just loved it. The campaign felt fulfilling. It traveled all over the world. It concluded the Modern Warfare trilogy. The survival mode is unbelievably underrated. This is the best survival mode we've had in Call of Duty yet. I still go back and play the survival mode. That is how much fun I have with it. It wasn't zombies mode, no, but it was an absolute blast and I played it endlessly. And again, it just, it upped the customization even more than we had already had it gave us so much to work with and i just i really do love everything about this call of duty little nitpicks here and there of course like there is with any call of duty but all in all this is one of the call of duties that i played the most and that i have the most fond memories playing call of duty vanguard i'm gonna leave that one to last but i'm gonna go right to world at war world at war godlike yep basically world at war amazing campaign multiplayer that was essentially just a reskin of cod 4 modern warfare and if that's in god like tier then this has to be in the god like tier introduced us to zombies zombies is a staple of the franchise now and it was my first call of duty i fell in love with the franchise because of this game it holds a very special place in my heart one of my favorite games of all time purely because it's what started my love for this franchise world war ii superman just because it launched with next to nothing. It went back to World War II. People were happy to be back to boots on the ground, but it was it was a lot more bare bones than I think a lot of people were expecting. There was like nine 6v6 maps when this game launched. Still had uh, supply drops. Still had a season pass. And it was just boring. The flow of the game wasn't great. Even out of the nine maps that they gave us, a lot of them really weren't good. You had like Gustav Cannon in there. Um, it had it, it tried to replace the perk system with this other system that was uh, like divisions and stuff like that that had like certain abilities strictly tied to that division 
And yes, they did fix a lot of this down the line. And if you play the game now, it still can be a lot of fun with all of the uh, the DLC maps in it and the DLC weapons and the DLC modes. And it's like permanent double XP and the war mode. The war mode is one of my favorite, if not my favorite Call of Duty modes we have ever gotten. I really hope to see it back in Vanguard. But aside from that, like the zombies didn't really care for it. The campaign, just generic Call of Duty World War II stuff. And the state that the game launched in was just completely unacceptable. The new uh, hub area, the headquarters was completely unusable for the first like couple weeks of the game's life cycle. It did get better over time, don't get me wrong, they did fix the whole Divisions thing and they added in like new perks and things like that for free that made the game fun. But I think at that point it was like a too little too late and I again this is another one of the Call of Duties that I barely played at all. Now we've reached Warzone. On the one hand this is arguably the best thing that ever happened in Call of Duty. On the other hand this is arguably the worst thing that ever happened in Call of Duty. I'm gonna put it in the awesome sauce category because I have put a ton of hours into this game. It is catapulted Call of Duty into the strat beyond the stratosphere, more popular arguably than it's ever been because it is free to play more Twitch viewers than it Call of Duty has ever gotten. It's you know it's already almost going on two years old, which is longer than any Call of Duty life cycle has ever lasted. Yes, there are a ton of issues right now with the new Caldera map and everything, but um, all in all. It, it, it's Call of Duty that's free to play. It's a battle royale. It's arguably like the biggest battle royale out there or among the biggest. Again, it's the worst thing that ever happened to Call of Duty. I say that because now it seems like the dev's main focus is always on that Warzone integration. How to bring things into Warzone. Fixing and balancing Warzone. And they, you know, they take away from the multiplayer and they take away from the zombies modes and all this other stuff to just focus on Warzone. And I get why a lot of people are upset with that. But at the same time, it's free to play Call of Duty. It's absolutely huge and it's always expanding and always growing. And every single time a new Call of Duty has come out, because we're now on our third Call of Duty with Warzone... It gets added into Warzone to make it even bigger. So you can go into Warzone right now and play with the Modern Warfare weapons, play with the Black Ops Cold War weapons and operators, and play with the Vanguard weapons and operators. That's absolutely ridiculous, and there's a good chance that they're just going to keep building this into this giant mega battle royale mode. And I understand that, you know, it's free to play Call of Duty and it's just a battle royale, but there's also respawn modes in here too, like the resurgence modes or plunder and little things like that, iron trials and everything. So I think in some, a lot of people's minds, it's the best thing that ever happened to Call of Duty, and a lot of people's minds, it's the worst thing that happened to Call of Duty. I'm sort of in the middle on it. This came out like right when the first lockdown was happening in my area and then pretty much for two months straight this is all i played this is how i interacted with my friends this is how i stayed connected this is how i kept my mind off of all the depressing shit that was going on around me uh, how i kept my mind off of all the anxiety of everything that was going on in the world warzone came to life at the perfect time and really did sort of salvage 2020 for a lot of people so that's why it ends up in the awesome sauce vanguard Last but certainly not least, hot damn, I am running out of breath. Call of Duty Vanguard right now, although I still stick by my review and giving it an 8 out of 10 for the most part. There are a lot of bugs going on right now. Yeah, I'll drop it here because I definitely don't think it's worse than Modern Warfare. If I were to put it in the quite alright tier, I think I'd have to drop Modern Warfare down because I do like this more than Modern Warfare, at least as of launch. Um, I'm already like Prestige 2 in the game and in Modern Warfare... I didn't, until, like, the first lockdown happened, I barely played Modern Warfare at all. I did not like it. Vanguard, I pretty much loved the multiplayer right out of the gate. However, where we currently stand with it right now, it is very broken. There were things in the beginning that I said in my review that were broken, but they were broken in sort of like a fun, campy Modern Warfare 2 way. Now they're broken in an annoying, quite literally game-breaking way that make it borderline unplayable. There are certain builds, like one-shot cross-map shotguns, no recoil, two-shot Type 100s and MP40s and STGs, like all sorts of crazy bullshit that ruin it. And with the Warzone integration, it has messed up people's leveling on their weapons. Some people have had their weapon progress, which means their camo grind completely reset. They've been reset back to Prestige 1. Uh, for me, because of the Warzone integration, Vanguard has almost bricked my console once, and Warzone has almost bricked my console once, and I am playing on a PS5. It has been a mess with this Caldera Warzone integration Season 1 of Vanguard. However, I still think that the core gameplay is a ton of fun. I love a lot of the maps in this game, and I've really been enjoying myself. So, I think that once all of these bugs and glitches get fixed out, once the broken stuff gets patched, weapons get nerfed, and things like that, this game can truly be something great and something memorable. Not to mention, it is the most maps we have had 
at launch since like the old school days of like black ops 2 and black ops 1 and stuff like that and then of course again like the previous couple call of duties all of the stuff coming down the line zombies maps multiplayer maps modes all weapons all that stuff coming in the battle pass coming for free this game still has a whole year ahead of it and where it currently stands i think it's good at the end of the life cycle it could be awesome sauce or even godlike because i think the core gameplay is a ton of fun and I am having a blast with it. The campaign is really good. It's actually fresh and interesting and gives us some really good characters. The multiplayer, like I said, a ton of fun. And the zombies, well, the zombies is absolutely god-awful. But I am hoping against all hope that since it's Treyarch developing, developing it, sorry, they're gonna, they're gonna, you know, keep working at it, keep with it, and they'll give us some round-based maps. And by the end of it, we could actually have a great zombies experience. So that is all for today's video, folks. Be sure to let me know down in the comments if you agree or disagree with what tier I gave each of the Call of Duties. And while you're at it, feel free to let me know what tier you would put each of these Call of Duties in and what tier video you'd like to see me do next. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more content, consider subscribing to my channel and ringing that little bell icon. That way you can be notified about all of my latest uploads. And as always, stay safe. Thank you so much for watching. And that's a wrap. Hey you, yeah you, if you made it this far, just know I appreciate you, and while you're here, consider hitting that subscribe button.